what is up internet shroom here and tonight i'm going to be heading into the modern format in magic the gathering online to play some boomer boros prison moon and chalice style what is that exactly let's take a look so back in the day people used to play this uh boros prison deck uh, it saw quite a bit of play and i liked it it was fun to play and it's based around the the basic uh, prison pieces are blood moon of course which turns all non-basic lands into mountains also, Chalice of the Void, usually played on one, which uh, just locks a lot of decks out of uh, being able to cast spells. Um, and what it would do is it would run rituals such as these Desperate Rituals, and also a Simeon Spirit Guide, which was a red card that you could just pitch to add one red mana to your mana pool. Uh, and it would do that in order to try to play Blood Moons on, like, turn two, usually. Possibly turn one if you could get, like, land Simeon Spirit Guide pitch the spirit guide to create a red mana so you'd have two mana then you could ritual and cast blood moon on turn one um this deck has fallen out of favor really since the prison you know modern horizons 2 well since the banning of simian spirit guide that card is no longer legal in modern which made me sad when that card went but um probably is a good thing to not have too much free mana although you know with mh2 around you got to question such basic things these days but anyway um, the banning of SSG seriously hurt this deck, and also Modern Horizons 2 did as well, I think with the printing of um, Force of Vigor, which just allows, um, you know, you can just pitch green cards to cast Force of Vigors and blow up Blood Moons and Chalice of the Void, so um, that's probably what pushed this deck out of favor. So I'm, I'm just kind of trying to see how it goes. How does this style of deck work in uh, Lord of the Rings era of Modern? Is it still viable in any in any form whatsoever uh, but of course i'm not just going to play it straight up i have a couple of twists on it that i want to try out uh i'm adding an additional lock piece to the standard blood moon and chalice of the void in ley line of sanctity uh running a full set uh main board of this card if it's in our opening hand we can play it for free of course and it gives us hex proof so with all of the racto scam decks circulating around and with all of the thought seizes that are constantly circulating in modern um i think this is worthy of a main board inclusion so i'm running the full set straight up um we'll see hopefully we'll run into a lot of decks today where it's good if not you know we'll just board it out and put other stuff in uh, i'm also running serum powder so this is a three mana artifact that is just a mana rock you can tap to add a colorless but anytime you could mulligan and serum powder is in your hand you may exile all the cards from your hand then draw that many cards so this gives us free mulligans basically uh because this deck wants to just nut draw you want your opening hand to be like a ley line a chalice a blood moon and like some fast mana uh, so serum powder just gets us more looks at more cards to try to uh, get a good hand that has uh, our lock pieces in it you know um, of the well um we're hoping for at least one uh, in our opening hand, hopefully two of, of like Leyline, Blood Moon, and Chalice. So Serum Powder should help us with that, in theory. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I haven't really tested this deck too much, but it seems like a good thing to add to decks where you're trying to assemble a hand that contains particular cards. So, I mean, it's really bad if you don't use it for Mulliganine. It's three mana mana rock, which is, you don't really want to be playing that in modern too much. It's a little slow, uh, but hopefully it'll pay off in, in getting us some nut draws. And of course, the other lock piece you play in decks like this is Ensnaring Bridge. We've got three of in the main board because we're playing, playing card, the Green Creator, and we have a Karn board that could fetch out uh, both a Chalice of the Void and Ensnaring Bridge. So that's the basic, basic idea. It's a lock deck. You've seen this kind of thing before. We lock our opponent under Blood Moon. We sit behind a bridge, and um, eventually we kill them with Planeswalkers. The Planeswalkers of choice are going to be Chandra Torch of Defiance, who just ticks up, does two damage every turn, eventually emblems to... Uh, have our opponent take five damage whenever we cast a spell. I'm also trying out a couple of other Chandras. Chandra Heart of Fire is a five mana, five loyalty walker. One thing that's cool about her is her plus just makes you discard your hand. So one thing that is a little concerning is always in Ensnaring Bridge decks is like, are you going to be able to get your hand empty so that creatures can't attack you? Well, she helps with that. She just straight, to, straight up makes us discard our hand. And then it exiles three cards of our library, lets us you know, red form of draw three, basically. She also plus ones just to do two damage to any target, so she's a win condition. She can just pin our, ping our opponents to death. And then finally, we are running a Chandra Awakened Inferno as an additional win con. It's a six mana walker that plus twos to make emblems that do one damage to our opponent uh, every turn. 
also can do three damage to each non-elemental creature or X damage to uh, creatures or planeswalkers and exile stuff. So she's there to create those emblems to uh, burn our opponents to death. And that's the deck. The rest of the deck is, you know, uh, it's the rituals. Uh, I've got a, a couple of other things, I guess. Um, I do have a one of Oblivion Ring. Um, just as a catch-all removal spell, there's all kinds of horrible non-land permanents in modern, so having one didn't seem like a bad idea. One Idyllic Tutor can help us find Blood Mood or, or Oblivion Ring. And then we've got some Sweepers, which is how we stay alive uh, until we get our lock pieces in place. We've got two Anger of the Gods, one Sweltering Suns, because it's really the early game that we're most concerned with. We are running one just straight up Wrath as well, um, just in case anything sneaks through our three damage based Sweepers. Um, now, I'm trying to try, uh, strike it rich as like a second ritual, total of six rituals in the deck. Maybe there should be a full place, full eight. Um, Strike It Rich is our substitute for Simeon Spirit Guide. It's no Simeon Spirit Guide, but it's pretty close. You know, it makes a treasure for one mana, which can allow us to turn to Blood Moon or, you know, turn to uh, Chalice. Uh, it also can be played again for three mana, so it can make a second treasure. There's a total of 22 lands in the deck, including three Spike Field Hazards, which are, you know, they're there for Raghavan. You don't want Raghavan to hit you in the early game, so you got to have something against that. Uh, of course, we're running a bunch of basic planes because we are planning on having Blood Moon on the battlefield at all times. We're also running three of Gemstone Caverns, so we're going kind of hard in on, on uh, this land. And uh, it's a legendary land where if it's in our opening hand and we're on the draw, we can begin the game with Gemstone Cavern on the battlefield with a luck counter on it. If we do, we have to exile a card from our hand, and then it can tap for a colorless, but if it has a luck counter, it can add one mana of any color instead. So if we're on the draw, this can allow us to turn one uh, a Blood Moon or Chalice of the Void. So that's why we're playing three copies of this. We're hoping to get uh, get some free land on the battlefield in games where we're on the draw. It's a little risky because it's a colorless land and it's legendary, you know, but um, we're kind of all in on trying to get our stuff out quickly. The sideboard contains two Hollow Mood Lights for, like, creativity and... Um, creativity and, like, Cascade decks. Second Oblivion Ring is just catch-all removal. Heliod's Intervention is mostly against, like, enchantments, I guess. Uh, also good for gaining life. Uh, we got artifacts kind of covered with all of our Karns, but this could help out if there's a lot of enchantments on the battlefield that we need to deal with, like, what, up the Beanstalk? That thing is ridiculous. Uh, a couple of Lightning Helixes against aggro matchups. And then we've got our Karn board of uh, tutorable artifacts. One Tormod script for graveyards, one Welding Jar to protect our artifacts. A Pithy Needle, a couple of defense grids. We actually probably will board these in against control decks. These are kind of all we got against control, which is really not enough. Uh, control is going to be a pretty bad matchup for us, but I mean, we, we could get down an early Blood Moon, so that's a good way to beat control. Uh, Liquid Metal Coating can combo with Karn to let us to blow up our opponent's lands. Torpor Orb stops ETP effects, and the fourth copy of Instilling Bridge, um, Walking Ballista, is a win con as well. There's supposed to be a fourth, uh, I don't know what happened. There's supposed to be the fourth uh, Chalice of the Void in here. So we'll fix that before the games begin and cut something. But anyway, that's the idea of the deck. We're going to lock our opponents out of doing anything meaningful as early as possible. We're going to sit behind our bridge and ping them with our walkers until they die. And that is this salty, moody deck. Uh, let's see how it does in the practice queue. It, this is basically untested. I used to play different versions of this, like back in the day when Simeon Spear Guide was legal and before Modern Horizons 2. I haven't really played it since, and I didn't get a chance to test the deck very much. So this will be a learning experience, but uh, let's get onto the practice queue and see how it does in Lord of the Rings era modern. And if you like this kind of walkie, um, off-meta, off-kilter MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. All right, game against Rothmar210. So, I think this is a Serum Powder. We do have a Chalice and a Blood Moon, but we have only one land and no way to accelerate. So let's powder this hand. Alright, here we have none of our lock pieces. <clears throat> so I think we powder this hand as well. Okay. So here we've got a Leyline of Sanctity, a Chalice, and a Blood Moon. 
We just need land number three, and Blood Moon is online, so this is perfect. Uh, they skipped their turn. <laughs> Maybe they can't beat a ley line. Uh, okay. Well, I'm keeping that in the video because you got to see there how the serum powder was actually very good. Because that hand was stacked. I'm scooping because they missed their turn. Okay, this is the same opponent. Hmm. We got a chalice and a moon. We only have one land. We are on the draw. I think we'll powder this. Okay, this is good. We've got the ley lines, we've got chalice, we've got a Dilic tutor which can find Blood Moon for us. Double A line is kind of not the best. Okay, so we're against hammer time. And they've got the cigar to Zade, so we're probably dead. Stone Forge, what is up with the with Moto today? <laughs> like where where are the pictures? Cauldra complete. Okay. Call to Complete is going to be pretty hard to beat. I guess we're chalicing? Okay, so neither Leyline nor Blood Moon are especially good here. Blood Moon is actually, it does stop Urza's Saga. We might have to Dilic Tutor for our uh, O-Ring. They can also use their Stone Forge to cast a hammer through the Chalice. Opponents. Plus five, plus five, what is it? Trample and indestructible. And haste. And first strike. Ensnaring bridge. Okay, that's a good draw. Play our bridge.
Ornithopter attacks for zero. Now they can activate Stoneforge. Hammer gets countered. Haha, -ha, you could have Stoneforged it. There's Karn. Alright, so let's play the Serum Powder as a mana rock. Another Stone Forge. It's a hammer. Of course, creatures with the hammer won't be able to attack through the bridge. Chandra TOD. Well, I think I want to just Karn. And let's go get a backup bridge. Um, okay, I can actually get stuff from my Exile Zone, too. So, the Stoneforge will be able to attack again. But the Cauldra still cannot, and nothing with the Hammer will be able to attack. Well, actually, they can get around it. They can attack with the Ornithopter. Ooh, I think I needed to Wrath of God there. They can get around it this way. They can declare an attack, and then during the attack, the other Stoneforge can put in the hammer. I think Sigarda's aid works even with the uh, Stony Silence. Okay, so they're hitting me for 10, hitting Carp for 1. Okay. Hammer time is tricky. Can always find a way. Spike field hazard. We will play that as a land. And we have to Wrath of God, I think. Okay, all their stuff gets indestructible. They can't move the hammer around anymore, though, but I'm at one. Oh. What happened? Oh, it doesn't give their stuff indestructible. Hexproof. It prevents white or uh, black or red sources. Doesn't do anything against white. Okay. So now we can do what here?
grab a liquid metal coating. If their ink moth nexus did not have infect, they could kill us with it right now. Planes. Okay, let's go Chandra. Let's add mana. Play the bridge. Plus Karn. Okay, let's plus Chandra, start damaging our opponents. Leyline of the Void. No, uh, Sanctity, I don't need to play a third Leyline of Sanctity. Let's play Liquid Metal Coating. Get rid of the Ink Moth Nexus. Let's strike it rich. Oh, gets countered. Let's flash back, strike it rich. Still gets countered? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought that uh, with the flashback cost it would go through, but I guess not. <clears throat> so, uh, yet another reason why strike it rich is no simian spirit guide. Alright. Let's just continue destroying their lands. Plus Chandra. No, I don't need to cast Chandra. Let's Idyllic Tutor. <laughs> is this fun, my opponent is asking? And they skipped the match. <laughs> okay. Uh, salty. A little salty there. Alright, we'll count that as a win. Alright, we're against Pibby. On the draw. So I have none of my lock pieces. And I have powder. So I think this is a powder. Alright. Here we have Leyline and Blood Moon. So we'll keep this. Black deck, good. So hopefully they're running Thoughtseize. Livewire Lash. 
equipped creature has plus two plus zero, and when it becomes the target of a spell, deals two damage to any target. Okay. Blood Moon's not going to do much here. They could be like a coffers deck or something. Plague Stinger. Oh, they're Black Infect. Ooh. That's nasty. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell, this creature deals two damage to any target. I'll just o ring that thing. I'll take one hit from the infect creature. We did exile two of our Karns in our powder, so we've only got two left to work with. Which is why it was more attractive to O-ring that artifact. Alright. We still can't Big Mama Chandra yet, we need one more land. Do I just play Blood Moon? I can't Wrath of God under my Blood Moon. I think I'll wait. Opponent's not doing much. Doing it the hard way. Strike it rich. Okay. Let's strike it rich. That gives us Chandra next turn. It appears to be slightly mana screwed as well. Eugenic growth. All right, they do have a set five infect. Do I minus her? Yeah, I think I'll get Chandra out and minus her. Oh no. I miscounted. I don't have enough mana. I only have five. Oops. Uh. Okay, totally meant to do that. Let's just anger. Yeah, that was bad. I could have struck it rich again. But I want to deal with that plague. St I had to deal with that plague stinger this turn. Five is just too much. Infect. And opponent's not doing much of anything. They're going to discard the hand size here. Duress. Oh, 
Alright, I think I'll just strike it rich again. Alright, they find another creature. Okay. Now we can actually play Chandra. And let's get rid of that creature. Oh, opponent. Opponent's discarding to hand size again. Gut shot. Okay, so ley lines are real good in this matchup. Let's play Karn. Let's grab liquid metal coating. Okay, they scoop it up. That was kind of sad, actually. So, Leyline's great. Blood Moon, I think, is not good. So, instead of Blood Moon, we'll go for a couple of Lightning Helix, Hallowed Moonlight. Helia's intervention doesn't do much, I think. They are playing with the equipment. Hello Moonlight just cycles. They could have, like, reanimation tech in their deck. I could see that. I mean, I have nothing better to bring in over those Blood Moons, so I think that's what it's going to be. All right, we know uh, we know Leyline is good against them. We have Ensnaring Bridge. We could start with Gemstone Caverns on the battlefield, but I don't think I actually want to. What would I exile if I did? Serum Powder? I might actually want to use Serum Pedar as a mana rock here. Sure. Brought it in for... Brought it in to do this, right? Maybe Idyllic Tutor, actually? Because I don't have the Blood Moons anymore? Yeah, I'll go for Idyllic Tutor. Okay, I can strike it rich. There's the live wire lash. Okay. Let's go get... Blood Moons are not in the deck anymore, so that's no longer a consideration. I'm gonna shock here. They're in fact, my life total doesn't matter.
Production Crusader. Pro Red and White, First Strike, Infect, 2-2. Two, two. Oblivion Ring. I could play the bridge. They could attack once. This creature deals two damage to any target. They'll have to hit themselves with the two damage. Yeah, let's go for the bridge. Phyrexine Arena. They can attack for two. Alright, I think I just O-ring the Phyrexine Arena. They've got to have some answers in their deck. I don't want them digging. So I need to, I need to find Planeswalkers. Plague Stinger. There's a Planeswalker, but I think this turn I just Wrath. Protection from artifacts, uh, that doesn't help you. That doesn't help you. All right. Let's get down Chandra, Big Mama Chandra, which I do have the mana for this time. Start making those emblems. There's Karn. Continue making emblems. Let's go TOD. Let's add some mana and strike it rich. There's a Plague Stinger. Equips it. Now it can't attack. Okay. 
All right, let's plus Chandra for card. Lane line of sanctity. Sure, I'll take a backup lane line of sanctity. I should have just done the damage. Virulent wound. Okay, so I can target my planeswalkers. So they're going to ping down Torch of Defiance. Uh, they're dead in two turns to the Chandra emblems. Okay. Let's plus give you another emblem. Let's Karn. So now you can't even equip that thing. Let's grab back a bridge. Okay, they scoot. All right, well, they got totally mana screwed game one, but uh, we really locked them out there. Mono black infect. Yeah, it seems like you want the green, really. Uh, or Simic. Simic is just the way to go with Infect, in my opinion. Although the Phyrexian Crusader is pretty, pretty good, actually. All right, our next game is against Take Action Gaming. We're going to be on the draw. Um, I think we powder this. If we draw a red source, this is a turn two Blood Moon but it's a little risky. We've got the powder. I think we can do better. Okay, this is a turn one chalice. So I think we're keeping this. We will put our gemstone cavern into play. Exiling what though? Exiling a land, I guess. We could get Thought Seized. And that would be bad. Okay, no, they just get a Triome. So they're probably a Leyline Binding deck. That means we would really like to get Blood Moon online. We shut off our... I should have uh, exiled Strike It Rich, because we shut off our own Strike It Riches with the Chalice. Forgot about that interaction. I don't even know if this is good against them. We got a talisman. All right, we'll play this tap land. Let's say go.
More talismans. Liliana of the Veil. Okay. Sure. Uh, this card is not castable, so I will discard it. Leonidas Sanctity is not bad, but I think I just slam Karn here. I can't actually Pithy Needle because of my Chalice. That's a problem. Man, I don't want that Liliana to ultimate. I'm not sure what to do about that. Well, her minus is a targeting effect. So, it can't target me. She can't just make me discard every turn, but we are an ensnaring bridge deck. I guess I'll just go for a liquid metal coating and start attacking their lands. I'll discard Wrath. Doom foretold. Oh, geez. That's going to wreck us. That's going to totally wreck us. Okay. Let's sack our chalice. Now we can snag our Pithy Needle. Uh, I don't really have a way to deal with Doom Foretold, though. Um, I have Oblivion Ring. Okay, they start sacking their talismans. Lingering souls.
All right, so we'll sack serum powder. I don't mind more land. Let's coating. We can get one of their lands. They can sack a spirit token. That means they won't be able oh they're sacking their talismans. Well, Karn do get rid of their talismans. So they kill Karn. Another talisman. Well, I don't really have much use for liquid metal coating without Karn. More lands. It's not great. Another Karn wouldn't be bad, because I'd love to Tormod crypt them. Oh, did they already flash back their Lingering Souls? Yeah, I think they did. They sacked Doom Foretold. Okay. They value their tokens. More lingering souls. So I need an ensnaring bridge. And I just draw more lands. All right, I do have a strike at rich I can play. More Doom Foretold. A lot of good draws here. Uh, I'll sack my Ley Line. Just more lands.
the flashback is two, the initial spell is three. And they draw another lingering souls. The, the flashback, the one in the graveyard. Okay. Um, yeah, there's the pithy needle. Chandra. The thing is, even if I find bridge, uh, they can just wait me out until I eventually have to sack the bridge. I could find a sweeper, though. Then they still have... They don't have any more in their graveyard. I suppose it's worth a try. Chalice of the Void? No, that's not going to do anything. Alright. Doom Foretold, eh? So give me Heliod's Intervention. Not much else that's good. Lightning Helix can kill Liliana, I guess. Although, she's immediately out of range of it. If she pluses, which she's going to do because we don't have any creatures. I guess I do just want the extra removal, though, to uh, keep away those spirits. I'm not sure Chalice is great. What would I name on Chalice? Two? Two does stop the flashback. I think we can cut these. Blood Moon's going to be good. We'll just cut the chalices. Pretty sure that uh, Ley Line is good, and Blood Moon is definitely good. So, yeah. Let's run it like this. All right, this has a ley line. But not much else. It has no play until turn four, other than the ley line. It has the, the serum powder. We're on the play. Is that good enough? I think we want a blood moon. Let's powder. Alright. No Blood Moon, but we do have a bridge. We have a Ley Line. Yeah, this is a better hand. We did exile both of our uh, Chandra Torture Defiance, though, which is a little upsetting. Our opponent moles to five. And we'll put out our ley line. All right, I think we're just playing this as a land. Four. 
flagstones of Trocare. Are they like an Armageddon deck? I'll just play the bridge while I have the mana available. Uh, Doom Foretold's just gonna wreck us though. Uh I would love to find a Blood Moon. They have Blast Zone. Alright, let's Karn. Let's go find a Pithy Needle. We'll have to name Blast Zone. I guess I could have just done liquid metal coating. I can do liquid metal coating next turn. Bone shards. Discarding a Bloodgast. Okay. We have five mana, not six, five. So let's Pithy Needle. Let's name Blast Zone. Let's pass. Beseech the mirror for and they did bargain it the one ring This card with Shieldred in the One Ring is ridiculous. Yep, it's the One Ring. I would love to draw land. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to shock. Do I get a planes? 
think two planes is enough. So, Ritual. Chandra. Start making them emblems. Blood gas comes back. More bone shards. Discarding the green souls. Doom foretold. That is the card that we cannot deal with. I need to find one of my answers. Uh, sack the ley line. Ooh, that's actually really good. So they're going to take three damage. They can just sack the ring anytime they want to, to Doom Foretold. How many cards have they drawn off that? Five? <laughs> this card is so ridiculous. They do sack the one ring. There's Liliana. Gonna plus. Okay. I'll ditch Lightning Helix. I want to cycle this Sweltering Suns. Another talisman. Thoughtsies. Um. What to sack? I guess Pithing Needle? I need some good draws. That is not a good draw. It is something I can sack to the Doom Foretold.
They're at eight. They're going down to seven. I just need to hold on for a few turns. I do have my bridge. The one ring drew six cards for them. Because it starts at zero, you tap it the first time, you draw one, then two, then three. So yeah, six cards. Not bad. I really need a Blood Moon. I really, really need Blood Moon. Oh, they sack Liliana to Doom Foretold. Beseech the Mirror. For another ring? Or maybe just Shieldred? Hmm. Come to think of it, that's another big problem. Uh, another Doom Foretold. Okay. So I'm losing all my stuff. Chandra Heart of Fire. Ooh, that's pretty good. I will have to sack it next turn, but this does accelerate our clock by two turns. They gain life off of these, don't they? I lose two life, they gain two life, and they get night tokens. Ugh. So they're gonna gain two. Here come the lingering souls. Land. They sack their talisman. Hopeless nightmare. It's gonna do two damage to us. Well, we certainly haven't drawn any of our answers to their stuff. So now we need O-Ring into Blood Moon. Oh wait, that's just gonna go away right now. So Bridge would be nice. Let's 
strike it rich is not doing much. I can just top uh what whoops. Red. I can just tap my fetch land for black mana. Another hopeless nightmare. Four, five, six. Yeah, too late for that. Man, we couldn't find our answers. Doom Foretold is always a messed up card. Uh, that's an interesting build. Too bad they had to resort to the one ring, though. GG's. All right, we're against Berserkirk. We'll be on the play. This has Sanctity Leyline, but none of our other lock pieces. And does have powder, so I think I powder this. This also has Leyline. It's got Karn, too. So I believe that's a keep. Nice to be able to keep seven cards after a mulligan. It's especially nice because when you have Leyline, it's like you're going down a card as well. Oh, <laughs> I almost get my whole turn. Been doing a lot of uh, being on the draw today. Polluted Delta, so Leyline's probably doing some work here. All right, go Arid Mesa. They're not shocking, so they're probably not Death Shadow. They could just be Demir Control, which is bad for us. Control is very bad for us. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're just jamming. Let's fetch out a planes. I can't imagine there's any world where this resolves. They even have force of negation. Uh, I might just scoop if this gets countered. Another force of negation. 
Like, we're just, we're so bad to this deck in game one, especially. Any deck that's, they've got to have a full play set of Counterspell. If they're playing Force of Negation main board as well. They probably have Spell Pierce. Well, it would help to draw some useful cards. It wouldn't really help, they'll just get countered. Oh, Masters. Um, let's just go ahead and ping the Bowmasters with our Spike Field Hazard. More Ritual is not exactly helpful. Chandra Awakening to Inferno wouldn't be bad, but I'm sure they have a kill spell for it. A Shieldred's Edict. Most likely. Serum powder, yay, just what we need. If they counter this, I guess I would be happy about that. They don't. Although maybe the proper reaction would be to be very sad, because that probably means they have so many counters that they're willing to just toss them away. Ensnaring Bridge. All right, I am satisfied that we're not going to resolve a meaningful spell. And we really don't have much of anything against hard control. We got a couple of defense grids, which we will board in. Chalice on one isn't bad. Chalice on two is really good against them. I'm actually main boarded those because Karns will never resolve to go fetch them from the sideboard. What am I cutting? Is there anything else? If a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Does that exile the orc orc armies? I'll try the Hallowed Moonlight. You never know. Are any of our lock pieces bad? No, I think they're all good. Maybe I'll cut a chalice. Cut one. Anger. Blood Moon's definitely good against them. I don't know, it's tough. All these cards are good. 
I mean, in Snaring Bridge, they didn't seem to be presenting a very fast clock. Maybe I'll cut an Ensnaring Bridge. And a Strike It Rich. Uh, if we find a land, this is turn two Blood Moon. And it does have a ley line, so I think it also has Awakened Inferno. I think we just get a top deck of land. Of course, they're a Force of Negation deck. They also could, they also probably are playing Spell Pierce. So the odds of this working out well are not good, but, uh, nope, couldn't find the land. Okay. Consider. Give me a land, please. Okay, they shock. That means they have a counter spell. It could be shocking for Bowmaster. Well, let's play this. Here comes the Bowmaster. Minamo, untap target legendary permanent uh, to use the ring multiple times. Uh, I think what I'll do is go for the Blood Moon. And then when it gets countered, I'll scoop. counter the ritual, okay. Alright, again, I'm gonna go for the Blood Moon, and when it gets counted, I'm gonna scoop. All right, GG's. Well, that was a high risk, high reward uh, keep for sure. And we got punished for it, but felt like the right thing to do. I mean, if we could have resolved a blood boon on turn two, that's basically GG. All right, we're against PG Brewing on the draw. Uh, if only one of these lands were red, this would be a turn two Blood Moon. We do have the Powder, though, so... I think I'll Powder, or do I keep? If I draw a red source in either of my first two turns, we do get a Blood Moon. This hand also has a Karn. I think I'm gonna keep this. Red source. Uh, this actually doesn't get Blood Moon on turn two, even if we get a red source. It would have if we got a red source right there.
ritual. Okay, they're a Valkit deck. So Blood Moon will be good. Can I draw a red source right now, please? No, I cannot. All right. Well, looks like I'm discarding to hand size. Um, what to discard? Do I want to reveal that I'm... I think Leyline of Sanctity, maybe? Make them think I'm mono-white? Sakura Tribe Elder. That's unfortunate, because that can go fetch basic lands. Ugh. All right, I think we're scooping this one. So we know Blood Moon's going to be good against them. Uh, I think all of our stuff is good against them, actually, even including Leyline. Is Hallow Do we want anything from our sideboard? This doesn't kill the Dryads. Leyline makes it so that their Valakut triggers can't hit our face. Heliod's intervention can kill the Dryads, however. Again, that was a risky, you know, that was a high risk, high reward kind of situation there. Is Chalice good? Cut a chalice. I'm not sure what I would name with it. Three? Three really hurts us, though, and it's it would take a ton of mana to do that. Anyway, one hits their elders. It hits, like, they probably have uh, arboreal grazers. Okay, this is a turn two blood moon. So that's a keep. All right. Ritual. Blood Moon. Plays a mountain. All right. There's a Karn. So let's play this mana rock. They cycle. We're going to be maximum jerkitude with Karn. Go. Let's fish out a liquid metal coating. Let's strike it rich.
see this is a boomer this is a boomer prison moment right here getting the turn the turn to blood moon it's a feeling wish for fury to kill Karn Well, that means Relic of Metal Coding doesn't do much. Let's play a Mountain. Liquid Metal Coding. Let's Strike It Rich. I'm holding on to this second Blood Moon, so in case they have Force of Vigor, they won't be able to get both my Blood Moons. Leyline of Sanctity? Sure. So they have to kill that, too, before their uh, Valakuts become online. Snaring Bridge will stop their Titans from attacking. Should they ever be able to actually play one? Alright, I want to draw like a Planeswalker. Sure, let's just legend rule ourselves just to keep cards out of our hand. Wrath of God. Opponent's got a handful of cards, but they're all green cards, I'm guessing. Sweltering Suns. Let's cycle. Chandra. Let's ritual. Play Chandra. Let's plus start pinging you. Oh, man. This is what always happens to me. I would love to have played that Chandra Heart of Fire. But instead, I just have to exile it. That's why I... So often, I'll just have her add mana on her first activation. I'm so unlucky with that. Probably have, like, double fury or something. The one ring. Okay. Karn, thank you. Plus two. Uh, I guess it was a land. So let's Karn. I'm gonna go get a Torpor Orb. We will cast a Torpor Orb. Uh, 
in these cute. All right, we locked them good. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything we need to change. Hey, look, it's turn two Blood Moon. That means keep. All right, I fetch a planes here, which might telegraph what I'm doing. If they have Besagey right now, they can deal with this. Oh no, they can't actually. They fetch up a basic mountain. Oh, they can, it costs two. Too bad. Yeah, this is another card that uh, has made Blood Moon not the powerhouse that it once was. People are just much more prepared for it now. And they can make that play if they have a green source before the Blood Moon comes down. They can float the green mana and then besage you it. Brennan 6, we'll definitely O-ring that. Another besage you. Well, they're ramping us pretty good, so like Chandra Awakened Inferno would be nice. The problem is they're gonna get their Valica tech online, so Leyline of Sanctity. Blood Moon also shuts down the Valakuts. Dwarven Mine. Are they creativity? No. Well, they could be. You could, you can combine uh, Amulet Titan and creativity. I guess I'll just drop the bridge. Decision number three. Okay, they were prepared. <laughs> Hmm. 
They can just infinitely loot the Seijus. I actually don't think there's anything we can do to stop that. Because uh, whatever we play, whether it's a Blood Moon or a Ley Line or a Pithy Needle for Renin 6, they have a Besage you in hand, so they can just Besage you it and then recur infinitely. I don't have, like, Lightning Bolts or anything uh, in my deck. I had the one of Oblivion Ring that they already Besage you'd, so I think there's actually... We actually can't lock them meaningfully. I'll play it out. Maybe we'll draw, like, Big Chandra in the next few draw steps. But, like, all, all of our lock pieces just get besaged, and Ren just grabs it back. Okay, I think they're... I don't think they're creativity. I think they just have Dwarven Minds. Sweltering Suns. See, my sweepers don't really do very much against them. I probably just want to save this to possibly double sweeper when they have a a titan. But by the, by the time the titan ETBs, we're going to be dead. You get an emblem with instant sorceries in your graveyard. Have retrace. I don't think that really does much for them. One ring. Well, since I drew Wrath number three, that means I can cycle Sweltering Suns, is what that means. Big Mama Chandra. I guess I play it. Start taking it up. Yet the Valkyrie's already online.
I just have a handful of burn, burn cards. Um, okay. We can scoop now. There's no way we're coming back from this. They have the Velikits online. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna start pinging us. Eventually they'll find a Primeval Titan. They've got the one ring. So, we can't keep any of our lock pieces on the table due to Red and Six recursion, so that's GG's. So, in actual matches that were fully played out, our record was two and three, I think. Which, you know, the build isn't perfect, I don't think. There's probably too many planes. I probably should swap out one of the planes for, like, another Inspiring Vantage. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure how good the whole overall strategy is. It's fun, though. Uh, I think it's cool having having mainboard uh, Lane Line of Sanctity uh, in, in a deck like this. Obviously, it hurts the consistency of, like, trying to pull off your main plan and whatnot. But it worked out well in a couple of games. Uh, I like the Serum Powder tech. I think it's really cool, and um, being able to keep after mulligans, keep a full hand of seven cards is sweet. Um, so there's some definitely some issues with the deck. Um, we just saw Ren in six is a huge problem, and the deck doesn't have any graveyard hate. So the only graveyard hate it, it has is a Tormod's Crypt that can be fetched off of Karn. But really, the deck probably should just have like a couple of... Uh, just like rest in peace or you know something probably rest in peace i'm not sold on strike it rich either since this does run into our own chalice on one which is where we want to play it most games uh probably these two should just be more like pyretic rituals or something or different cards entirely i don't know you kind of want the rituals though getting the turn two blood moon is awesome or, or Chalice on one. So major changes I would make are definitely li like some Rest in Peace in the sideboard. Um, some hard Graveyard Hates. I don't know about the matchup against Control, what more can be done about that, really. Um, more Defense Grids. <laughs> A full play set of Defense Grids. I don't know. What can you do in Boros... In a deck like this, the best thing you can do is get your Blood Moon down on turn two, really. And hope they don't have Force of Negation. I think that's just a, a bad matchup. So, Sideboard Graveyard Hate, get rid of the Strike at Rich, replace those probably with Pyretic Rituals. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem that you have with decks like this that don't play blue uh, is like finding, finding the cards. There are quite a few games where we just we couldn't draw our answers. Um, and that happens in decks like this. And it's tricky in a deck like this because you actually don't really want to accumulate cards in hand since you're an ensnaring bridge deck. But you want to look at cards. So, I don't know. I'm always a fan of, like, Maze Mind Tome slash Reckoner Bankbuster. Maze Mind Tome is probably actually better because it can, you know, scry instead of drawing a card. But it can also draw a card and gain life. Uh, that's probably better than Reckoner Bankbuster, which is a creature that won't be able to attack anyway because of Ensnaring Bridge and can only draw cards. So maybe some Maze Mind Tones would help, or like Misha's Research Desk is a good card for that. Um, just like Red Style Exile uh, till the end of your next turn effects, you know, like Bitter Reunion, that kind of stuff. I also think, like... We saw how bad Ren and Six was there. Yeah, it needs some needs some more like hard answers. Maybe another Oblivion Ring in the sideboard. Although that didn't turn out to be much of an answer in that deck, so I'm not sure. Maybe a couple of burns big burn spells, you know, like Bane Fires or something. Or just like a couple of fateful absences. It would probably be best actually. A couple of fateful absences in the sideboard to deal with those problematic planeswalkers and big creatures that might have, like, abilities and stuff. But overall, the deck is really fun. I enjoyed playing it. I, I plan on playing it more in the future, probably on my channel. So um, this is just, like, the first iteration that, um, you know, a learning experience. Uh, overall, though, it's cool. And I, I do think the Serum Powder is a good addition. 
and I'm going to keep it all four all four copies in future iterations. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching some Salty Moon Boomer Boros prison action. If you did, if you like off-meta, off-kilter MTG content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night.